members of our staff. We're asking for approval of this ordinance. Second reading. Thank you very much, sir. All right, this is a public hearing. Anyone who wishes to speak on this item, line up to the left, and uh, we'll start from there. Uh, I'm gonna have a waiver for uh, additional time to be there. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, one additional name. Uh, I cannot make it out. It's also the G. Somebody please state their name. Jeff Strait. What is it? Okay, and uh, morning. Okay, thank you. Morning. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good morning. My name is Amos Mears of 1217th Street to talk about Agenda Item 51, the RNC Ordinance. The First Amendment prohibits the making of any law that abridges the freedom of speech or the right to peaceably assemble. I reject the entire RNC Ordinance based on this right alone. I also reject the prior notion spoken in these chambers that the right is not absolute. This is a right I am born with a right protected by the Constitution, a concept I swore an oath to defend from enemies foreign and domestic prior to enlisting in the United States Marine Corps. The requirement of a permit suggests that one needs permission in order to acquire the access to the object in question, making the subject of the permit a privilege, not a right. With a right, one needs not ask permission, therefore no permit is necessary. By designing an area in which to exercise my free speech, and allowing free speech only in certain areas, such as the public, public viewing area, you are abridging my, first, my free speech. Therefore, it is a violation of my First Amendment to the Constitution. By requiring permits to assemble on public property, whether a sidewalk or a park, you are abridging my right to peacefully, peaceably assemble. Therefore, you are violating my constitutionally protected right. As a free human being, I will not allow my rights to be taken as privileges. My rights are absolute, absolute and non-negotiable. If I want to march down a sidewalk or any public park, whether by myself or with 500 of my closest friends, I need not ask permission for this, nor will I ever. The creation of a green zone goes beyond infringing on my First Amendment rights. It goes on to control my behavior in ways only found in totalitarian forms of government. The event zone is a police state, and it will cause the very problems you are looking to avoid. There's not much in this ordinance that does not attack the Constitution, a concept you and I took an oath to defend. If City Council passed this ordinance as it stands today, delivered by the mayor of this city, the government of the city of Tampa knowingly and systematically violate the Constitution. I will then call into question the legitimacy of this local government and will be forced to take steps built into our democracy to remedy the situation. I offered a way out of this, an alternative solution. In a letter to Mayor Buckhorn, in which City Council was copied, I outlined a solution that celebrates our freedom and our First Amendment. Instead of eradicating our freedom with a green zone, I propose eliminating this item, both in the form of a vent zone and public viewing area, and replace it with a free speech platform at Curtis Hickson Park, where a stage can host concerts as well as a place people and groups can speak out to their audience regarding the issues that are important to them. I sincerely request this solution be explored further. I'm willing to help put this event on and have a team complete with a promoter with access to national and local bands. I want to provide a solution to the city that celebrates freedom, celebrates democracy, and celebrates Tampa. In a free society, we should foster good behavior, not control it. I would like to see freedom celebrated instead of a battlefield outlined in the current ordinance. I would like to see some of the money being used in ways to promote behavior. Instead, I would like to see ways of, of, of excuse me. I would like to see some of the money being used in ways to promote behavior instead of ways to control people, which, they, which do not work anyway. We are free people who, not, who, who will not be controlled. We are free people who look for ways to express ourselves, to evolve, to communicate, to make our world a better place. Help us foster that. City officials continue to say they support the First Amendment. Then I say to you, the members of City, city Council, vote down this ordinance in its entirety. Let's instead celebrate our freedom. Let's embrace this political event in all its messy democratic glory. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Mike Fenger. I am a retired Army colonel, live at 4219 Hollow Trail Drive in Tampa, and I am the president of the ACLU of Florida. I want to thank the council for the opportunity to appear here once again on the event zone ordinance. I actually agree with much of the previous speaker. Unfortunately, the courts have always held that there is not an absolute right to free speech and it can be limited. The question is, how should it be limited? 
In late August, you and the citizens of Tampa will be privileged to witness firsthand one of the great unique celebrations of our Constitution, the nomination of a president and the development of groups uh, who wish to oppose that nomination and the policies of that party. Uh, these visitors are all going to gather in our city. The ordinance before you today estimates that there will be 10 billion media impressions of Tampa during that period. The ordinance and its implementation uh, will have a significant impact on how the world views our city. We don't wish to recreate the violent images that lingered for years after previous conventions. This ordinance is a significant improvement over the first draft, and I want to thank the city attorney and council members who met with us for listening to our concerns. That said, the draft addresses many of our concerns, but not nearly all of them. It is still flawed, but I have no doubt you will pass it today. The most significant problem of your ordinance is the bureaucratic and procedural attempt to address what will be organic events that spontaneously evolve uh, that neither the city nor the demonstrators anticipate. Uh, the ordinance encourages you to view these events as discrete events, but the reality is quite different. The success will depend on the intelligence, the flexibility, and the judgment of the officials who implement its provisions. Unfortunately, many of the demonstrators that you have seen doubt your sincerity. Their personal experience and mistrust is reflected in their testimony. If you pass the ordinance, we recommend that the city councils and city officials augment positive steps that change the psychology and build a spirit of trust. Why not establish a host committee for to welcome demonstrators? Why not have city leaders visit these groups when they come to town to welcome them? Assign city liaison to help the groups identify and resolve problems before misunderstandings arise. Commit the city to providing water and shade to demonstrators along playgrounds. Ensure that every law enforcement officer understands that demonstrators are not enemies, that they have a right to be there, and to have them smile, be friendly, and welcoming. To be flexible in enforcing the regulation and not be slavishly adherent to it. Uh, in implementing the public viewing area, avoid creating cages where demonstrators are penned up. And finally, distinguish between the event that people who come to Tampa to confront authority and act violently from the thousands who come to act peacefully and who are committed to maybe acting illegally in the acts of civil disobedience which have long been celebrated in this country. Finally, between now and the convention, the ACLU will be conducting webinars and town meetings to provide information to the groups and individuals who want to demonstrate. We invite and encourage city officials to participate, welcome the visitors, and encourage a positive dialogue. Thank you.